The Cursed Scarecrow, a howering monstrosity that stalks the farmers of Minecraft's lush lands. Able to disguise itself and armed with a rusty scythe, it hunts its victims to gruesome ends. However, very few know the dark origins of this accursed creature. Learn more of this twisted tale as we delve into the untold story of Minecraft's scariest mob. The peaceful night sky starkly contrasted the chaos consuming an isolated farmstead beneath it. Long, monstrous shadows were cast on the various well-lit crops as hordes of zombies and skeletons invaded the quiet dwelling. Joseph, the man who called this farm home, brandished his trusty scythe against the army of the undead. He had never seen them in a horde this large, and the torches throughout his fields did nothing to dissuade their approach. Knowing that help from town was unlikely with how removed the farm was, Joseph steeled his resolve. Under a hail of arrows, he ran through the crops, throwing out torches as he did. The steady breeze quickly encouraged the growth of a large fire. Joseph sacrificed his crops to create a wall of flame to scare the monsters away. While dealing with the remaining stragglers, smoke made it increasingly harder to breathe. His vision grew foggy as Joseph retreated from his own blaze before collapsing. Suddenly, all through the hills came a terrible rumble, and over the crest came… a tank? Truly the scariest mob. Today's sponsor is War Thunder, a free-to-play multiplayer game where you take command of military vehicles in the air, on the ground, and over the sea to battle it out for superiority. It's available on PC, Xbox, PlayStation, and Mac, giving almost all gamers a way to play. The latest update, Fire and Ice, makes right now the best time to start playing. Torch the competition with all new flamethrower weapons and updated graphics. Vehicles will now fly apart in spectacular fashion. Riddle your opponents with bullets in real time. War Thunder has a huge variety of vehicles spanning from the beginnings of the 20th century through modern times. With prototype vehicles to some of the most famous, each machine comes with its own features and handles uniquely. My favorite is the Su-25 aircraft. Blasting opponents on the ground has never felt more satisfying. So use the link in the description to download War Thunder for free! All new players and those who haven't entered War Thunder for six months or more will receive half a million Silver Lions, a week of renting legendary German ground vehicles, three premium vehicles as a gift forever, XP boosters, a week of premium accounts, and other bonuses. Hurry up and get all these from the link in the description! Thanks War Thunder for sponsoring the video! Joseph awoke to the crisp morning air. Shooting fully awake after remembering the events of last night, he found himself in the middle of his cornfield. He must have run into it when trying to escape the fire last night. As Joseph checked himself over, a sudden chill went down his spine as he realized someone was right behind him. Oh, oh, jeez, you scared me. It's just you. Standing tall behind Joseph was merely the scarecrow he had erected yesterday. The scarecrow was adorned with a pumpkin head and limbs full of hay. He made it because it proved an effective deterrent against small creatures and birds eating his crops. Joseph shook his head at the thought that now he was even talking to the scarecrow. Turning away, he began to push his way through the cornfield. Exiting the maze, the remains of last night's battle came into view. The fire consumed almost all the various crops he had planted. Luckily, the massive cornfield and the house were spared. Unfortunately, Joseph knew he would have to work hard to make up for the losses if he was going to make ends meet this year. With a sigh, he shuffled into his home. Don't go in the basement. Joseph unconsciously muttered the phrase like a mantra before moving to the armor stand. Removing his leather armor, he prepared to get to work for the day. Unbeknownst to him, his troubles were only beginning. Rain fell heavily over the town. Unable to work with the growing storm, Joseph visited the local graveyard. He stared solemnly at one grave in particular, not noticing the woman approaching him. Joseph, is that you? You know she wouldn't want you to spend so much time here. Hey, Elizabeth. I know. I just can't help it on days like today. Joseph was standing before the grave of his recently departed wife, Anna. Anna had moved into town to try to start a new life when they met by coincidence. They quickly fell in love and built a farm together. In more ways than one, she proved better at cultivating crops than he ever did. Together, life couldn't have been brighter. That is, until one tragic evening. Anna was running through the cornfield and made her feel wild and free. Unfortunately, she never came back out of the cornfield on that day. Once he realized something was wrong, Joseph searched high and low for her, but all he ever found was a patch of dried blood amongst the corn. The whole town looked for Anna to no avail. After a year passed, 
she was presumed dead. They held a funeral, but Joseph couldn't bring himself to attend. As Joseph reminisced of better days, he idly chatted with Elizabeth. She was Anna's sister. They spoke for a while in the rain, but Joseph ended the conversation abruptly before leaving. He never really liked Elizabeth. She was very kind and friendly, but her timing always made Joseph suspicious. It was only a short time after Elizabeth had moved into town that Anna mysteriously vanished. Joseph had no proof, of course, but he still distrusted her. As the rain started to die down, Joseph returned to the farm. He shuffled his way to the house while lost in thought. Sensing something was off, he turned to the cornfield. The scarecrow, whose head usually sticks up above the tall corn, had disappeared. Oh, the rain must have knocked it over. Joseph grumbled to himself as he changed course. Pushing his way through the thick crops, he quickly lost sight of the rest of the world. Joseph had to hope he was going straight, or he might get lost in the dense corn stalks. However, before reaching his destination, Joseph heard an eerie whisper. Hello? Who's there? No reply came. Joseph pushed toward where he heard the noise. Finding nothing, Joseph started hearing rustling and more whispers from all around him. He frantically tried to push through the corn to find the noise's source. The whispers grew louder getting closer and closer. Boom! Oh! Eh, look at his face! We really got him! Three young men had jumped out of the corn at Joseph. They were the town hooligans, who spent all their time playing pranks instead of working. Aggravated, Joseph took out his scythe and started to yell at them to get off his property. The hooligans laughed as they left. Still irritated, Joseph exited the cornfield, eager to finally rest inside the house. In front of the town hall, a small crowd gathered. Standing before them, blocking the doors, was the mayor. What are we supposed to do if we're not safe in our own homes? Are you doing anything to find the missing people? The mayor was trying his best to calm the crowd. Things had not been going well in town. Starting with Anna, more and more people had started to go missing. Not only that, but people reported seeing horrifying creatures haunting them at night. Almost everyone in town had their own story of a strange encounter. Even the mayor recalled seeing a ghastly visage lurking in his home. The responsibility to solve these issues fell onto his shoulders. But there was only so much the mayor could do. As the townsfolk continued to complain, an assistant approached the mayor, informing him of good news. Sorry, sorry, urgent business calls for my attention, but I will continue to field your complaints when I return. With the assistant leading the way, the mayor left the angry crowd behind. The assistant had located a specialist that may be able to help with their town situation. With the dire circumstances, the mayor went to see them immediately. They arrived at an isolated hut not far from town, and the mayor began to divulge their troubles to the old hag who lived there. She cackled while listening to the tale. <laughs> you and your town have been cursed! I could feel it when you walked in. She informed them that someone, or something, was bringing dark magic to their simple town. They would need to remove all traces of whatever it was to dispel it. The mayor wondered who or what was causing all of this until someone came to mind. With the plan slowly forming, they left without looking back. As the sun set, Joseph sat alone in his house. He stared out the window with a deadly focus at four figures staring back. The tension suddenly broke with a knocking at the door. Answering it, Joseph was met by the mayor. They moved further in as the mayor told Joseph that they had found a solution to the town's troubles, but they needed his help. The sudden request flustered Joseph, but looking out the window, he gained resolve. I'll do the best I can, if it'll help, but what do you need doing? Night blanketed the sky as the mayor led Joseph into town. Bright lights danced in the distance, as a gathering in the town square was growing larger and larger. Joseph was left confused. What was going on? As the mayor approached, the crowd parted for him. Confidently, he led Joseph to the front of the masses as an eerie silence fell. Waiting for them was Elizabeth, flanked by two guards. Joseph, tell them they're crazy. Tell them I'm not a witch. I didn't curse the town. The crowd booed as she spoke, throwing rocks and food at her. The mayor turned to Joseph. Witches hadn't been seen around these parts for ages, so for there to be one in their midst was a disturbing thought. The town wanted him to make the final say on Elizabeth's guilt. The crowd waited with bated breath for his verdict. The silence stretched into minutes until, with a cold stare, he agreed with the town's accusations. The angry mob cheered at his declaration as the guards dragged Elizabeth towards the unlit pyre. 
She struggled and yelled insults at Joseph. Turning away, he couldn't bear to look as they set her ablaze. Her screams echoed through the night. Despite the heinous deeds done to remove the curse, things did not get better for the town. More and more people started to go missing. At night, the foul phantoms stalked the streets, leaving the citizens to cower in their homes. People started to leave as the town fell into ruin. Joseph was awoken by the sound of thunder and heavy rain. Most nights he had trouble sleeping, but this one was particularly tough. Getting out of bed, Joseph moved to the living room to get a late night snack. Flashes of light illuminated the interior as he shuffled to his storage chests. He munched on some old bread as he looked out the window. What he saw left him in shock, a scarecrow on the other side of the glass staring back at him. He nervously stepped back before seeing another in a different window. Looking around in horror, they had his home surrounded. Not hesitating, Joseph grabbed his scythe and dashed outside. He rushed through the rain only to find nothing. About to return inside, a voice cold as the grave stopped him in his tracks. Joseph. Emerging from the corn was a ghastly apparition of Joseph's once beloved wife. The specter shrieked, causing Joseph to stumble back before fleeing inside. The phantom was right on his tail as he ducked through the door. Unlike with the scarecrows, his home provided no safety from the ghost. Joseph swung his scythe frantically as the phantom entered the house, but it merely sliced right through her transparent figure. Desperate, he threw the scythe at her before running into the bedroom to hide. The safety of the closed door only lasted a moment before the wraith passed through it. Cornered, Joseph stood in terror before the angry spirit. It shrieked, shattering the glass windows with a burst of sound. But Joseph dodged past her. There was only one place remaining he could hide. He quickly ran to the basement, the angry spirit pursuing right behind him. He slammed shut the basement door, and silence surprisingly followed. With a sigh of relief, he concluded the ghost wouldn't follow him here. Joseph took a torch to illuminate the dark room. Blood and hay cluttered the floor. Various rusted tools laid strewn about. Joseph stared in horror at the pit in the dirt floor large enough to be a grave. Memories that he repressed came flooding back to Joseph as the trauma sent him crashing to the floor. Emerging from the grave in a fury was the ghost. His wife's voice shrieked out in anger. Why? Why did you kill me? I curse you from the north. I curse you! The next morning, three pairs of feet shuffled down the dirt path. The town hooligans had returned yet again to play pranks. As they meandered, they joked about the run-down farm. Is anyone else creeped out by all of the scarecrows? Like, what's up with that? Dude, stop freaking out. The dozens of straw men hung motionless above the corn as the punks headed towards the house's front entrance. Looking at the place's condition, they joked that maybe Farmer Joseph had abandoned this place. Wandering inside, none of the trio noticed the door gently shut behind them. After rummaging around, they finally came to the bedroom. Shattered glass and straw covered the floor, and the wind whistled ominously through the broken windows. As they looked around, they heard a creak from the doorway. Farmer Joseph blocked the bedroom entrance, a knife in hand. His hair was now gray, and one of his eyes was a sickly white hue. Scared at first, the intruders soon followed Joseph into the other room to receive their normal scolding. This time, however, Joseph quietly got to work on a pumpkin with the knife in his hand. The silence was nerve-wracking. Hey man, we're sorry for breaking in. You know it was just a prank, right? They're all done. Joseph tossed the knife away to reveal three jack-o'-lanterns he had been working on. The hooligans looked at each other confused as Joseph picked one up and started to approach them. With unnatural strength, Joseph forced the carved pumpkin onto one of their heads. Thoroughly freaked out, one of them pushed Joseph over as they all made a break for the front door. What? It's locked! You are bad, bad, bad men. Joseph, now armed with a scythe, caught up to the punks, swinging wildly at the pumpkin-headed one. As the blade cut flesh, the other two men screamed in terror before successfully breaking down the door, abandoning their friend. Joseph dragged the pumpkin-headed man down the basement stairs, blood coating each step. In the basement, he stopped at the edge of the pit as if stuck in a trance, looking into the darkness. He didn't notice the pumpkin-headed man stand up behind him before it was too late. They struggled before both falling into the deep grave. The two remaining hooligans dashed a short distance from the house before turning to see if they had been followed. A light rain had started to fall, 
but it didn't even register as they watched the house with panic-stricken stares. After a long silence, a monstrous roar rang out as if to affirm their fears. In the basement where two men had fallen into the grave, now a single monster emerged. The curse placed on Joseph now realized its final form. Bursting out of the house, the cursed scarecrow roared and charged at the terrified men outside. The hooligans ran in sheer terror into the cornfield in hopes of escaping. The monster followed swiftly behind. Pushing through the thick corn, the two punks soon got separated, unable to see anything. They ran as fast as they could, hearing the sound of a scythe carving out a path just behind him. After a while, one of the men burst onto a small path cleared through the corn. He tried to catch his breath and ascertain where the monster was. He waited and listened, but heard nothing. Suddenly, much further down, his friend emerged onto the path out of breath as well. Noticing his buddy, the second man tried to beckon him over. He did not notice the scarecrow silently emerge from the corn behind him. With a stunted scream, the monster cut down the man before charging at the last survivor. Once again, the last hooligan fled into the corn as fast as his legs would carry him. He swayed and swerved through the crop hoping to lose the pursuing horror. The sound of the scythe got closer and closer. Suddenly, the man ran into something, ending his escape. It was a scarecrow, and not only one, but dozens. With no time to think, he tried to run past them, but to his disbelief, they moved to block his way. Suddenly, the cursed scarecrow burst into the small clearing. Please, no, no! He could do nothing as the monster swung its scythe down upon him. On that day, three new scarecrows joined the growing army of hay. Don't forget to download War Thunder for free and receive tons of awesome goodies as a new player. Thanks War Thunder for sponsoring the video.